Q&A boxes? Some of them do that. Some of them put them in the in the actual chat itself. Um, mm -hmm. Some Sometimes they get called upon, mm -hmm. yeah, get to speak, depending. I guess we could, you could make Ben co-host and then he can enable people to speak. Well, my plan is to make Ben full host when I'm ready to be done and then he oh. can shut everything down when he's done. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. And the only thing you'll need to do, Ben, is in the upper left-hand corner where it says live on YouTube, Yes. Um, you'll have to say stop streaming first, and then you end, end the class, and then everything will be fine. Okay. Or before leaving the meeting. Otherwise, we'll just stream blackness indefinitely. Yes. That's a lot of pressure on you, Ben. Well, usually it'll stream for like three or four hours, and then YouTube takes care of it. But Sure. God bless. Sounds okay. Anyone who's staying, who plans to stay, feel free to remind me. All right. Well, it'll just be blackness, you know, black, black, black. I'm likely to remember. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. uh, it's not a high threshold. It's not a high responsibility. Right. It's not, it's not the end of the world if you forget. So. Okay, cool. That's good. Or, I mean, if it is the end of the world, if I forget, then no one will be able to hold me accountable. That's true. Very, very well played, very well reasoned logic. That's, that's right. That's what we pay me for. Hey, that's why we come here for the tough questions. That's why I make the big bucks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Amelie is fighting sleep. Let's see. I had something fun for you. There you go, to help inspire you. Yeah. All right, I'm out of here. Start your questions whenever you want. Okay, all right. Uh, I don't have any questions. But oh, no, I'm, yeah, uh, there's a question in the Q&A. Okay, great. Okay, bye. Well, oh. I'll just leave it all right, hi, it's Ben. Uh, if... Uh, Everything is coming from me. Is my seed oh, projecting the door? Uh, 65 per finger snap. Seems like I'm walking to the door, but actually is my seed projecting oh, the a small door to big door? Yeah, if it's like that, are we walking? Or actually, we're not moving at all. Uh, <laughs> seed is our, yeah, everything is our seed projection. I mean, that's true. Everything is our projection, and that's true, and you can say that. But, um, and I don't know, maybe I should write this here. I'm going to try and write this in the chat, okay? Like, there's a difference between saying, okay, that it's um, not actually walking, okay? Okay, to say not actually walking, right, is different from saying um, actually not walking, okay? You see, it's a little bit subtle, but those two mean different things, okay? So it's not like somehow the real truth is that you're not walking. The real truth is that there's not a real truth that's not coming from your seeds, right? So are you walking? Yeah, you're walking, right? So it'd be going too far to say that you're not walking. You're walking. You're walking to the door. And that process of you projecting your feet moving on seeds and you projecting the door getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and closer and closer and closer, that process is called walk into the door. And so it is. And so it's walking to the door. So, uh, yeah, basically you're right. The only thing I would give you a hard time about is I wouldn't say that like, actually the secret truth is that nothing's happening at all. Um, actually the secret truth is that there is no secret truth. That's not coming from our seeds. And that's why we are walking to the door because we, uh, are having the seeds going off to see the door get closer and our feet get moving to the door. Okay. Someone okay with that? Do I, do I just to answer the next question or does someone tell me that uh, that's a sufficient answer? I, I, I'm new to this. All right. Oh, I got a thanks teacher. That's encouraging. Okay. Thank you, uh, Karen, um, who, whose name I may or may not have uh, butchered. Let's see. Um, okay. Um, 
How else do I answer questions? So it looks like Sugong answered the other question that was in there. <laughs> well, fine. All right, great. That's fine. Hello, G Master. Ben, it looks like another question appeared in the Q and A. Oh, okay. Oh, here we go. All right, great. Hey, Alex. Oh, you heard I'm a master debater, right? Uh, can you go over the legal responses and give us some tips on how to use the responses? Um, uh, and the other guy's next question to get to the truth. Whoa. Yeah. Um, yeah, right. I mean, we could spend a lot of time on this, right? Which um, is probably not ideally what you want to do. But um, so uh, let me see. Actually, I happen, I think I have a document here that can help. Um, let me see if I can find this thing here. Oh, yeah, good. Here we go. Um, I just recently taught a class on this. So I'm going to try and give you this super, super shortest version that I can. Um, do, 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 do something like this. The four responses should be here. Um, here, I'm going to share my screen briefly. Uh, where to go? Where to go? Here we go. Here we go. Um, okay, so the four responses. Okay, Len Shi, four responses. Um, uh, well, you know what? Maybe this is, um, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I think this is too hard a way to do it. All right, basically, uh, all right, I apologize. I, I think basically, um, if, uh, if someone ask, makes a statement, you can say yes or no, okay? But you never say no, you always say why. So you get them to give you a reason. And um, and then the legal responses, it's it's Dama Drup and Kyaba Majung, okay? So say Dama Drup, Dama Drup, Dama Drup. Good, you're saying Dama Drup. Say Kyaba Majung, Kyaba Majung. Okay, so I'll give you a statement, okay? The sky is above my head because it's blue, okay? The sky is above my head because it's blue, okay? So Dama Drup means... The sky's not blue, and kyaba majung means yeah, the sky is blue, but that doesn't mean it's above my head. And um, if you think about it, and I'd love to spend some time on this some other time with you, uh, every argument you ever had with anyone in your life ever, every debate you ever had with anyone in your life ever, um, it it that's all that was happening anyway. Okay, there's only two ways really to dis disagree with a reason. Okay, so you make a statement and then you give a reason and either the reason is not true of the thing you're talking about or the reason is true of the thing you're talking about but still doesn't prove the other thing. And that just takes practice. And I'd love sometime if you want to spend time on it, I'm not too hard to reach and we could do a debate class sometime, but it's uh, it takes practice and repetition and um, and it's and it's a wonderful system. And I'm really, it's one of the greatest blessings of my life that it was something that I got to do and practice a lot. And in New York, they have an online debate group at the Three Jewels on Wednesday nights at 5.30, at least at the moment. And I don't think it would be hard to get yourself included in that group. Uh, what is the most powerful coffee meditation we can do? Oh, um, as I feel that this life, we are mostly projecting past life seeds. There are many seeds queued up as we have so many past seeds in what form of doing coffee meditation or intention can we move our good seeds forward, right? I mean, this is, this is classic, you know, four steps. I mean, what makes a thing powerful is um, it's, it's, uh, the, the thing that you're thinking about, your intention, why you're thinking about it, uh, doing a deed, and then your, your coffee meditation, right? Thinking about the deed at the end. So what are the most powerful seeds that you have? It's probably studying emptiness. I mean, I think that's typically what they would say. Now, if you studied emptiness with uh, special people, then that's especially good. If you were studying emptiness because you uh, wanted to help other people and you were doing that with special people, then um, then coffee meditation, thinking about how wonderful you are for doing that, how wonderful it is that you've done that. Um, this is this is the most powerful thing you can rejoice in. This is like this is the most powerful seed. And so identifying the most powerful good things that you are doing, 
is one way to find the most powerful coffee meditation, but doing the most powerful things you can do, which you are doing here. You're getting together with special people. You're learning about emptiness with those special people. And if you're thinking about the fact that you're doing it because you want to help people, because you want to help your mom and your dad and your sister and your brother and your friends then um, and people you haven't even heard, then that thought um, is a very, very powerful seed. And uh, thinking about that, like as you drift off to bed at night is a really nice thing. My wife and I, we have a tradition for a long time that we started in retreat um, where we would just tap, tap each other, tap, 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 as we were going to bed, uh, which was just a reminder uh, to think about a few things, a few sweet things that you did today as you're going to sleep. Mm, Q and A, yes, okay, okay. I'm, I'm on top of the questions at the moment. Someone else gets something else. There's one in the chat from Seiji. Chat from Seiji, what? Um, all right, Seiji. It's from Noor. Oh, it's from Noor. What's the question? You're just speaking, you can just speak, right? No, that's not how we do this. Hi, Ben. I just want to know, because you and Kendra are great practitioner, how this uh, knowledge helped you in daily life? Oh, that's a good question. I, I, I hope that it makes me a little kinder. I hope that it makes me more patient. I hope that it makes me more loving. Um, I, I don't know, you know, I ask myself this question a lot. I don't know if I'm such a great practitioner. I was thinking about this, uh, how my text is like a, it's like a map that you can kind of hold up to your mind and see if uh, like where your view of emptiness is. But then there's this other tradition, uh, like Geshel has always said, I don't need to hear you explain Nagarjuna to me. We all know where your view of emptiness is and did you get angry today? And I, I get angry, so I, I don't know. I, I think I get, maybe I get more credit than I deserve. Of course, I get angry sometimes, but I, I'm also patient with myself. And um, maybe the thing after a bunch of years is pra of practicing is um, it's okay, you know, it's okay. I'm very, I'm patient with myself. I have things that I do that are naughty sometimes, and then I think, oh, that was naughty, but I, I don't get that upset about it. I just try to slowly fix it. And we're, we're human. I'm human and I make mistakes and it's, and even I think terrible thoughts sometimes. And uh, it's almost funny. I mean, I, I try to have a sense of humor about it after all these years. And, um, and I keep, I keep a book. I keep a six times book. It's, it's around here somewhere, but um, anything you do, anything you do to try to get better is wonderful. And, and I think there's a tendency to think when you notice that you did something bad, naughty, right? Something that's going to produce a result that's not a result you want. I think there's a, a tendency to get frustrated, really frustrated with yourself. But, but it just, it struck me at a certain point that, that everyone does silly things sometimes and everyone makes mistakes sometimes. And, um, and what's different about you is that you noticed it and, and noticing it, it's like your, your minus in your book should, it is a plus. That is a plus. It's a very good deed to notice that you did something that you want to improve. It's a very powerful, good deed. And that is the only difference between you and everyone else. It's not that you did something naughty. Everyone does naughty things. What's different about you is that you have some interest in fixing it. And that I think in my daily life has been a big breakthrough for me. Um, uh, Q and A, let's see. Thank uh, you, Ben, that was very helpful. Okay, good, good luck. We're all doing our best here, you know? Be, be patient, be nice to yourself. Be, or you can't be nice to everybody if you can't be nice to yourself. I think it's impossible. Mm -hmm. I think that you can't give yourself a hard time in your head all day and then suddenly expect to be sweet to other people. You don't have this problem. You're one of the sweeter people that I've known. So you probably can't be too mean to yourself. It would be impossible. You could just tell. 
it would tell if you were really hard on yourself all the time, all the time, then it would come out. You'd be hard on other people and, and you're not, you're pretty nice with other people. So we should probably, <laughs> Thank you. Be Thank you. um, if you are me or someone like me, uh-huh, you can judge other people, but other people should not judge other people. Otherwise they will fall. When can I understand that I am already a Buddha? <laughs> well, I mean, I'm laughing because it, it occurs to me that um, uh, as long as you're not sure you're not. Um, so that's kind of a helpful guide, I suppose. Um, you know you're a Buddha when you're a Buddha. And if you, um, can you, you know, you can, you can't be not sure if you're a Buddha and be a Buddha. And you can't not know if you're a Buddha and be a Buddha, but could you think you're a Buddha and not be a Buddha? Yeah, probably, <laughs> probably, that's probably happened. Um, so I, look, I would err on the side. If there's any doubt, then um, you're not there. And um, uh, relying on friends is always a good idea. Uh, having good friends, having Dharma friends is one of the things that also I think protects us um, almost more than anything. And, and that's also a big key, I think, that we get from debate also, Alex, is um, exposing our thinking to our friends who we trust um, is so powerful. Um, and uh, if you haven't changed your mind about, I don't know, four things today, um, then uh, I don't know, you might be in trouble. Uh, it's really good, you know, you should be challenged. Oh, in the diamond way, probably, uh, then you understand that you're already a Buddha. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. And I don't know how appropriate it is to talk about the diamond way or not. Uh, these teachings are secret. But of course, there's this very, very famous idea of thinking of yourself as a Buddha. But this is, you know, this is a response to, to seeing that you're struggling and, and knowing that you're, you're, you're not yet and, and you have to be careful. But I think that this there's a diamond way thought that I think is very beautiful that somehow maybe I'm the last poor schmo who's still stuck in suffering and, and all of the rest of you are trying to get me out of this mess. And so you're, um, you do this by like making me host Q and A's to make me think about my practice and to make me think about who I am and where I'm going more deeply so that you can get me to the point of finally being where you are and I and I thank you for that and it's very kind of you um, and uh, I, I don't know I don't know when I'll understand that I'm a Buddha but I uh, but maybe for I don't know for someone else you might look like a Buddha and that's that's pretty cool you could be a Buddha for someone else if someone else has the seeds I don't know if there are countless beings and countless beings that could look at you and you have no nature of your own, and all the beings that could look at you have different seeds, then wouldn't it be logical that from someone's perspective, you are already a Buddha? And if it's logical from someone else's perspective that you're already a Buddha, then you could say that's a, a logical perception of your, you as a Buddha. And so you could say that if you understand that, then you already understood that you're already a Buddha, which is not to say that you can't also understand that you're not a Buddha from a, another perspective, like my own perspective, I'm not a Buddha, but uh, you know, maybe to my teacher, I look very different uh, because my teacher has been practicing longer than I have. And my teacher has good concentration and my teacher is trying to see me as a special person and they're good at it. So the, the Ben that exists for my teacher, he, he exists, he exists and he's doing very well. And the Ben that exists for Ben, he's got a few extra problems, but, but we're working on it. Um, oh, a rabbit with horns is, is the example, is an example of a non-existent thing, right? Okay, if emptiness is true, then that means it's also possible. Could you explain it please? Oh, like could, could a rabbit have horns? I mean, I may not understand the question perfectly, but um, are, are, like, could a thing that seems to be impossible be possible? 
I, I, I think so. I mean, there could be a rabbit with horns. I, I guess it's possible you could have the seeds for that. Um, uh, I, I don't think that that should be impossible. I may not be understanding your question and I apologize if that's the case. Um, let's see, uh, but oh, oh, good. Uh, oh, not just for me, but other beings may see it. Oh, like realms you don't see. Yeah, totally. Sure, there could be whole planets. Um, I mean, it, it may be that for you, rabbits don't have horns in your world, okay? And in my world, all the, all the rabbits have horns, okay? And maybe for me, from, from my seeds, it's just as silly, okay? Like maybe in, in my universe that you can't quite see. Um, maybe we always bring up the silly example of a, a rabbit without horns. Oh, that's as silly as a rabbit without horns. Um, could there be a universe like that? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Could, could be. Could be. Um, uh, okay. Um, Karen, you have met some. Oh, thanks. You got it. Oh, good. That's encouraging. <laughs> uh, uh, Karen has met some entrepreneurs. They meet the diamond cutter system when their business is starting and they seem to have to serve this system. Um, uh, I'm sorry, to be volunteer for their business. They treat this system as a kar karmic partner to support DCI spread around the country. But after their good seeds ripen, their business is growing. They have less time to serve the system to be a volunteer as a leader. You wanna see them continue to serve and be happy. What seed should I plant? Hmm. I hope, oh, I think this will be on YouTube. I'm not sure if I totally understand the question. Um, you wanna see them be able to have, if I understand correctly, you wanna see them be able to both have a successful business and be able to devote a lot of time to to studying to learning about seeds and um yeah i think that's that's wonderful so what what seeds should you plant you know you can look for ways i mean you can plant seeds with them i i think directly i mean third person perfect is a nice thing you can go and find someone else um who is struggling to balance their business life with their life learning about seeds and and help them you know I, I don't know do do their dishes for them while they study watch watch their kids for them while they study or or you know um go you know get them coffee so that they can study or but uh you also don't have to find another person it sounds like you're already talking about some of these people if you can help people in this way and um you know, help them find ways to study at the same time. I studied for years. I mean, for a long time, I, I had a corporate job. I worked for a company um, managing 3000 apartments in, in uh, Ohio, Cincinnati, Ohio. And, um, and anytime I was uh, going to work or, or going to lunch or any task, like doing the dishes, I would just, I was listening to, to teachings. I was listening to um, to the teachings of my teacher of Geshe Michael, I was listening to the ACI classes, and um, and so I don't know. Maybe you can help people come up with creative ways of of solving this problem. And and this is a seed. You see, sometimes the most powerful seeds are are just directly addressing the problem. You see, so you're you're literally helping these people to find a way to both study the Dharma at the same time as as working their business and being successful but at the same time um you that that also plants the seeds for you to get better at it for you to see more of it um so sometimes just you know the most powerful seed is just helping the people in front of you and helping the people in front of you also plants a seed to see the people in front of you be helped um, oh, good. Okay. The Buddha can see uh, past, present, and future with the omniscient mind. They say that, yeah, since things change moment to moment, I have a hard time thinking how the future could be perceived. It sounds as though the future is predetermined. I know this is difficult. I know I struggle with this too. It's very hard to say. Um, I don't know, are things predetermined? It looks like that, but it also, 
it also looks like we have some kind of, you know, we have the power to act, we have the power to move. So there's this idea about the, and we had an Adams text a lot, I think the definition of an existing thing is like, it's basically something you can see. Um, or maybe it's something you can't help but see. Tsemi mikbe yupe tseni. The definition of an existing thing is like that which you see uh, with a with a kind of normal perception for the most part. So it kind of seems like you just can't help but feel. You can't help but feel that like you have the power to touch this ear or this ear or touch the top of your head or rub your belly while you're trying to pat your head. Uh, you you can do these things. You can feel. You cannot help but feel that you have the power to to do things, to choose, and um, and that seems to be true. I mean that you can't you can't deny that you have some power of choice. Is that power of choice um, determined by your past deeds? Yeah, they say that too. They say that too, and I, I think this is a very difficult point. I, I, I mean, I struggle with this too. It's, it's a very good question. Um, we do seem to have some force of will. We have some power to make karma, to plant seeds, and we have some power to decide what seeds we're gonna plant, and those seeds are very powerful, and to shift what we're doing in the moment, you know, it, it's, it's very hard. It's very hard, um, and, um, and, and so, you know, how does that look for a Buddha for them to see the past, present and future in a single instant? Wow, I don't know. I, uh, and I don't know if I could tell you when I get there, you probably gotta see it to believe it. But I will tell you this, you know, when you think about omniscience, um, if everything, if the world's coming out of your heart, you see, like if nothing can exist without you thinking of it in a certain way. If it's impossible to say that anything could exist without you having the seeds from the way you've treated others in the past to see things in a certain way, if nothing could exist any other way than that, you see, then the world is coming out of your heart. And that would mean everything. That would mean the past and present and future. And that would mean the future is coming out of your heart right now, that the future as an existing thing is coming out of your heart right now. And the past is coming out of your heart right now. And the present is coming out of your heart right now. And, um, and that's coming from seeds in every moment. So, so omniscience in a way is just paying attention to everything already coming right here in front of you out of your own heart. So maybe it's not so crazy after all. I'll tell you when I get there. Anonymous attendee asks, uh, as I understand, we don't want to be reborn in lower or higher realms. They say that human realm is the best place to see emptiness and plant seeds. They say that. Uh, by the way, if you keep practicing and subconsciously you were reborn, oh, in two realms, oh, in the higher or lower realm, is there a chance to see emptiness there? Yeah, I, that's a good question. I don't remember if you can do that being born there. I mean, um, uh, 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 I guess pr probably, I mean, um, I think generally they say that, you you know, this is the best place to practice, but they also say that in the type of meditation necessary to directly perceive emptiness, you are actually, your, your mind is moved into the form realm. Um, so, you know, there's an argument to be made that you you can't um, see emptiness directly here uh, in the desire realm. Your your mind has to move into to subtler levels. Um, uh, do you have a chance? I don't remember. This is like a this is like a better question for Sugang probably than me. Um, can you see emptiness directly in if you're born into the form and formless realm. I don't remember, but there are a bunch of other people who will be able to answer that. Uh, that people who are more familiar with the concentration realms and the, the resultant realms that you end up in due to deep meditation. Um, I'm sorry, I can't give you a better answer. Someone will have a better answer than me for that. Um, okay, uh, Elmira, thank you, Ben, but uh, Buddha could judge, right, sounds, strange still in any case for me uh needs the scene seeds turn off my habit of judging and the ability of positive analysis probably 
I'm not sure if I totally understand. I mean, um, yeah, I don't, I, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, they say a Buddha can judge, but it's a, you see, a Buddha's not really judging. They know, they know what your results are. I mean, the traditional definition of omniscience is not just um, that you can see the color of a rock on the bottom of the sea, though they say you can. But the traditional definition of omniscience is knowing what naughty things you shouldn't do and what good things you should do. So, you know, saying a Buddha is judging, it's a little funny, right? They're not like judging in the sense that they're sitting there thinking about it. They know each thing you're doing, what the effect is going to be. And so they know how that's going to work out for you, you see, it's because that's really the heart of being a Buddha. That's really the heart of being able to know how to help us is knowing what's going to happen when we make the decisions we we make, knowing how it's going to turn out, and um, and that's a that's a very powerful tool, and I think it's something that develops from from trying to take care of other people. Um, uh, okay, Oscar, uh, in the pen teaching, I learned that seeds opening and showing me everything I see, okay, think and feel right. Where are those seeds opening? Mm -hmm. uh, if I'm feeling a stomach ache, it seems like the seeds are opening out there, uh, but showing me this broken, aching body. If my understanding of the pen is opening in my mind, uh, shouldn't it be that the whole room where I'm going to find the pen is also opening in the same place my thoughts are and everything else too? Yeah, I mean, that's not wrong. Um, you know, to say where are these seeds opening is a little funny, right? Because they're not. Um, it's it's a little bit of a funny question because it's not a it's not a place, right? Uh, seeds are not physical. The mind is not physical. I mean, you said opening in my mind, so that that's true. You're right, and the mind is not a it's not a place. Um, it's not a physical thing. Um, is the whole world opening in your mind? Yeah, the whole world is opening in your mind. Does that mean that there's no physical world? No, it doesn't mean that there's no physical world, right? We had this question earlier, and this is sort of the, the, the mistake of the mind only school, that somehow if you can understand that, that seeds are in your mind and seeds are opening in your mind, and then your mind is just this whole place where all the stuff is happening, then then what world is there to even talk about? Um, but the higher schools say, well, that that's just how the world comes about. And um, and the world is is not all your mind. And a rock is a physical thing. And your body is a physical thing. And there are people who are not you, who are not your mind, who can love you and be loved by you. And they are not you but they are coming from you. And that's hard. That takes a lot of thought. That takes a lot of thinking about. They are not you and they are coming from you. The world is not you and it is coming from you. This whole world of physical stuff, it's physical because you think of it as physical. It would not be physical if you couldn't think of it as physical, but you do think of it as physical. You can't help but have this, this seed coming out of your heart to see things as physical, as solid. And so they are, and so they are, and uh, and they're not your mind. And it's possible that I, I misunderstood your question, but you know, ask ask away if there's anything I can do to clarify. Um, uh, Don Deva beings will go straight to hell after uh, death because the good seeds have been used up. They say that uh, does it mean that beings in the Deva realm are not able to plant? good seeds but are using up their good seeds um and oh but in scripture uh you read that devas are there to listen to the buddha uh to the buddha's teaching and um they will practice emptiness uh, practice to see emptiness in the deva realm they say that i mean they say that they say and and i think that the term deva can mean different things like a pleasure meaning it can mean a lot of things but um 
it is possible to collect the seeds to be born in a special place where there are Buddhas teaching all the time and where you can practice and learn to see emptiness directly. That's true. And we can also, I, I, there is also an idea of being born into a state where it's not virtuous per se, but everything is so great all the time that you just enjoy that good feeling. And if you aren't having some bad feeling to, to know that there's something that needs to be fixed, then you just enjoy that good feeling all the time and you don't try to fix it and you can't plant seeds because you can't practice because you don't want to practice because everything's already great. And I think, right, we can see maybe this tendency in ourselves in, in the world. I have this tendency. I mean, I think um, we talk about like people born rich who live rich lives who are spoiled, but, but I think we all have these tendencies a little bit when things in my life are going well, my practice can slip a little bit. And then, and then I, I feel like I can see little problems come up in my life when my practice is not strong enough. And then I kind of, I get myself back up and I say, okay, you know, I gotta, I gotta get back to work here and start fixing up the problems in my life. And then, and then it, it works and things get a little better. And then maybe I get a little bit lazy again and I have to fix it. And, um, so luckily for me, uh, things start to, uh, trouble does start to come before trouble gets too bad to remind me that I need to practice. Um, so yeah, I think, I think both kinds of things can exist. So we, I think we all have some experience with that. I don't have any experience being born into a Buddha paradise, but I do have an experience of being born into a place where a magic glowing box can sit on my desk here and I can, you know, listen to my teacher teach and study uh, holy books. Um, so maybe I'm, I'm working on it. Maybe I'm getting there. Um, oh, okay. Oh, here we go. May uh, one Lim. Um, there are pleasure beings in the form realm and those in the desire realm. Oh, is there any difference between them? Yeah, probably. Uh, not totally my area of expertise, but um, generally speaking, um, the form realm is a place where you're addicted to food and sex. Oh, sorry, the desire realm. The desire realm is a place where you're addicted to food and sex. They say the form realm is a place where you are kind of like, sometimes they say addicted to the, um, the, the bliss of meditation. And the formless realm is a place where you're addicted to the, the mental bliss. So there's, there's a beautiful like physical sensation that comes from deep meditation. There's a beautiful mental sensation that comes from deep meditation. And they say in the desire realm, you're mostly addicted to food and sex in the form realm you're addicted to the pleasurable physical sensation of meditation. And in the formless realm, desire realm, food and sex, form realm, the pleasant physical sensation of meditation. And in the formless realm, the pleasant mental sensation of meditation. Um, so I, I think the, one of the main things about these three places is you have different hangups there. You see, you have different levels of addiction kind of, you know, what, what level of thing, how subtle a thing are you still hooked on? And, um, you know, none of these three are necessarily better than the other. They're subtler than one another. And the point is to get out of your addiction altogether and, uh, to understand that the world is coming from you and then, um, and that you can have everything you want if you know how to plant the seeds, as opposed to just eating all the good food or, or eating up all that good feeling and running out of those seeds. Um, teacher Ben, my question is that some practitioners around me really want to go to the pure land. Okay, Sukhyavati in their next life. Is that a better place to further uh, practice compared with the human world? According to what I've heard in our classes, it seems not Maybe my understanding is mistaken. Yeah, this is a different thing. Okay, Su Sukhyavati, there's this idea. A pure land is a different thing. Okay, this idea that um, that you could go to a place where a Buddha is teaching, uh, that's great. That's not 
the former formless realm in that way. That's not, that's not a bad place to go. That's a good place to go. That's a virtuous place to go. It takes a lot of good seeds. It takes a lot of good seeds in practice. I'm, I'm not aware that I ever went there. Um, but um, what they're talking about is building a relationship, maybe in some cases, right, uh, in the Pure Land tradition, maybe they do a, a mantra or they do certain practices um, to try to be close to a holy teacher um, in, in that holy teacher's realm who will teach them. I think it's a very beautiful thing. I think it's a very beautiful thing. Now, at, you know, at the bottom of that practice, you have to be planting the seeds for it. So can a mantra work for that? If the if you're doing a mantra and you're thinking about the right things and you're serving people in your life, you're taking care of people in your life, you're taking care of the Dharma, you're getting your planting the seeds to be close to a teacher, you're serving teachers in your life, you're taking care of people around you, loving people around you. Yeah, sure. I, I think you should, it should be possible to go to a place like that. And, uh, and it's a wonderful place to go. And it's probably better than um, Albuquerque or New York or um, Tuscaloosa or whatever uh, city you're in in the world right now. Um, uh, Dawn doesn't mean pleasure beings that practice emptiness will not go to the hell realm, meaning, oh, it's not 100% deva beings that go to hell realms after death. I think you would have to say that. Yeah, I, I think it's very hard to practice in the former formless realm. I think that's a very hard place to practice. But um, if it is possible, or if we're including when we say pleasure beings, if we're talking about are there beings like that that could practice, then would they have to go to the hills? No, I don't think that they would. And, um, uh, oh, look at that. I, uh, I, I think I'm, I'm mostly on top of the questions that we've asked so far. Um, but uh, again, I'm not, I'm not as good at the uh, former formless realms. That's not a thing that I'm, I'm particularly well-versed in. I would bug Su Kang about that. He has a lot of concentration levels in his um, uh, Wheel of Life book. Mm. Okay, should I, should I check the chat here? Oh my gosh, there are things happening in the chat. Let's see, from Seiji. Seiji, you can just talk. Uh, don't make me read your thing. Are you asking okay, me a question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I am. Cool. So as I understand it, emptiness as a lack exists, right? Yeah. Uh, as a concept, sorry, but a lack itself does not exist. Like the the thing itself, emptiness. Okay, so there is an elephant on my head, then, right? Well, that that was going to be my the third part of my question. What's the difference between something that doesn't exist and something that is a lack? But I'm not talking about the concept here. Is like emptiness itself what? and the purple elephant. Well. Uh, well, let's just talk about the purple elephant. Is there a purple elephant on my head? No. Okay. Is there a lack of a purple elephant on my head? Mm hmm Okay. It Does the... What's that? Peanut gallery? No, I would say so. There is a lack of purple elephant on your head. Okay. So, does the elephant on my head exist? <laughs> no. No. Does the lack of the elephant on my head exist? Definitely. Has to, right, Seiji? Yeah. Do you agree? Yeah. yeah. Sold. Right. So is that a concept? The lack of, yes. It is a concept. Okay. And does it exist? It does. Okay. Is an elephant a concept? Yes. Oh, um, so can you feed peanuts to a concept? No. No? Why not? So I so you can't feed peanuts to an elephant? Yes, but the, an elephant is not a concept. Or, or, um, like if you take everything to concepts, you cannot put, uh, feed any concept, even you as a concept, right? <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, uh, Chi Chi, why can't I feed a concept? Can you? Why not? Really? No, I mean like the, uh, like the archetype. Not. Why should that be a problem? Why should I not be able to feed concepts? Because it's you're the the archetype. You're not an actual example. Like if we're talking about the concept, right? 
So <laughs> thank you for actually bringing up something in my book for a change. Um, <laughs> we, we just had this, okay? We just had this actually in the first day of my class, the prasad, when we talked about Rangsen and Chitsen, okay? Mm -hmm. um, uh, which is a lower school thing, okay? So Trantika is into this Rangsen Chitsen. Um, the the idea, the architect, the the archetype, the concept, the the abstraction, the the image in your head, okay, the luminous shining image, okay, or the actual thing out there, okay. Um, and mm -hmm. in the lower schools, actual thing out there is synonymous with okay means the same thing as a changing thing, okay. In the lower schools, all right. Johnny Lama says. That higher middle way, the consequence branch of the middle way, doesn't accept wrong sense, doesn't accept wrong sense because they'd be drupa. They don't accept uh, the actual thing out there because an actual thing out there would have to be actual. It would have to really exist. It would have to exist by definition. And we don't accept things that exist by definition. So does that mean that we don't believe in anything but cheese, but generalities, concepts, abstractions? Yeah, maybe. I, I think you could say that. I think you could kind of say that. Now, now, right, you always got to say next thing out of your mouth, right? And it's already come up a few times in this discussion. Next thing out of your mouth always has to be don't get weird, right? The, the concept mm -hmm. of another person is someone who can help you and be helped by you and love you and be loved by you and the concepts in your life are things that can serve you and the and you can make concepts in a factory and sell them to people or give them to people as gifts and plant the seeds to see more of those concepts and um in, you know in my heart okay for me this is a big uh key to the middle way, you know, when, when Arya Nagarjuna says, look, the, the cause and the result can never be in the same place at the same time. Um, is that true? You see, like the, I don't have a plant around me. There are plants on the other side of the room, but, um, but if you have a, if you have a tree, okay. Or if you have a plant, mm -hmm. can the seed for that plant exist at the same time as the tree? Yes mm -hmm. or no. Why no not? Why not? Because when the tree appears, the seed is gone, right? No, not right. You see, no. do, it, can you see a plant from where you are right now? Yeah. Yes. Did that plant ever have a seed? Uh, <laughs> we, yeah, I guess, yeah. Hard question. It did have a seed. Yeah. Is that a jepak tema? Is that a logical perception? Is that a logical perception of that seed? Yes. So does that seed exist now as a past object? It does, uh-huh. Okay, so they both exist at the same time. <laughs> but because they're concepts, you see? If, oh, yeah. if you want the seed for that plant to exist as a real thing, a rangsen, a real thing in your hand right now that you can plant again, that's dumb. That's dumb, you see? Mm -hmm. But does that thing exist as an idea? And can those two ideas of a cause and its result exist in the same place at the same time? That place being your mind. Yeah, why on earth not? Wow, cool. Um, am I? Oh, thanks, man. Oh, yeah. Well, that's my that. feeling. <laughs> yeah, chew on that. I'll chew on it too. <laughs> uh, let's see. Carl, that seed becomes, oh, part of a tree, like that milk in the fridge. I don't know why that's like the milk in the fridge, but the seed does become, yeah, it becomes part of the tree. It does, right? But a seed is different from a tree. Theoretically, and and Nagarjuna knows he knows that we're gonna think about seeds wrong. He's counting on it. Okay, so he writes this funny book where he's gonna trip us up and say he knows that that you're gonna start this discussion, and I'm gonna say the seed can't be there at the same time as the result, right? And you're gonna say, yeah, right, that's right, okay? Because a seed is different than a tree, right? You can't say that a seed and a tree are the same thing. So. 
since they can't exist at the same time, that tree's seed doesn't exist. And then causes don't exist, you see? Because the tree doesn't have a cause. And if the tree doesn't have the cause, then a tree can't be a result because a result is a thing that has a cause. But he's he's playing with you because he knows that when when he says seed, your poor mind is going to think that 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 tree should have to have a real live seed that you can put in your hand right now. But if you can say, does that tree have a seed? And it does, it does have a seed because it has had a seed because that seed exists in, in my mind as an idea, as a past object, uh, then, uh, then it's harder for him to trick you. Um, uh, let's see, Carl, no, Sally. Oh, from Carl. Okay. Oh, from, uh, let's see, isn't it that in the meditation, a person defines what they are meditating on, like where they will get to the former formless realm? Oh, um, like where they will get to the former formless realm if they won't go that far in the meditation levels and will just get off at the first floor where they, where they can see emptiness directly. I think there's some truth to that. I think so, but you have to have very good training. That's that's true uh, for Sally, but easier said than done. You you have to be very well trained to be able to meditate that well and recognize where you are in your meditation. You need a good meditation teacher. Uh, but yeah, I think you're right. Um, he, he, you know, it's hard. Um, when we say, ah, thanks, Carl. When we said today that, oh, that right, the milk in the refrigerator, right. Sorry, that milk in that refrigerator, right. Uh, the mind only refrigerator. Um, when we said today that milk spilled and the refrigerator freezes in there and it becomes a fridge itself, your, our mental seats. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. You could say that. Um, and, and then just remember that the only, we like the mind only school. The mind only school is great. This idea that everything, that your world is an illusion because you think the world is not your mind is, is not bad. You see, it's not bad, but the, the thing is that that's also true about your mind. And the mind only school struggles with this problem about the mind itself. And to have a mind, to have awareness, to have the ability to think about people, to see other people, to experience other people, to project other people, to make other people from your mind, partake of them, have a nice time with them, love them and be loved by them. This, uh, this also comes from seeds, right? And that's where the mind only school struggles is they think, you know, somehow at the bottom of it all, the final answer is your mind. Um, and in the higher school, the, there is no final answer there is no final thing at the bottom of everything. There is not anything at the bottom of everything. And that's why the world receives love and is made in love when you love people because you can plant seeds on an empty universe and then you will meet loving people. And those people are not you. And the love that they give you is not just your love. It is coming from you, but it is not you. You are not it. And we're very blessed to have minds that have that ability and to have people in our lives and, uh, and the ability to plant those seeds. And um, let me see. Oh, boy. The questions kept coming here. We're almost there. This might be the last one. Extremely cool. I, I, I agree, Carl. I think it's cool, too. Um, let's see. David, you're, you're probably you maybe the last question. It's uh, almost time. In the example of a magician who throws a stick on the ground, makes it appear as a horse. Okay, what about the innocent bystander who happened to come to the scene without having seen the magic trick? They would be seeing the stick as it really is. Right. Would they be seeing the emptiness of the stick directly? Oh, yeah. I mean, you could say that, right? It's a metaphor. Gosh, who did they say that is in the metaphor? Someone help me. Uh, Sugang, you're, uh, you're the perfection of wisdom school. Um, the people who come up, they neither see nor think of the stick as being a thing. Yeah, right. So yeah, it's like someone in the direct perception of emptiness. I think that's correct. You could say, now, are they seeing the emptiness of the stick directly? You know, the stick, is, that's a metaphor, right? Um, but in the metaphor, okay, of a, a, a magician, right, who throws some dust on the audience, okay, and then the audience sees the stick that the magician has suddenly turns into a, a cow, 
or a horse or something, okay? Um, the audience, okay, is like ordinary beings, they say, okay, in that they, they think that the stick is a horse, okay, and they believe it in their hearts, they believe it, okay? So that's like an ordinary being, that's like poor Ben, okay? Um, the magician, he, he's like, they say he's like uh, someone who has seen emptiness directly, okay, but is now on the path of habituation, has gone back to seeing things wrong. He also, he threw the dust in the air and he got the dust on him and he sees the horse, but he knows that it's a trick, okay? He knows that it's a trick, but, but some bystander who walks up at the last minute, they weren't there for the dust, they don't see the horse, they don't think it's a horse, um, so... Yeah, are they seeing the stick as it really is? Yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah, are they seeing the emptiness of the stick? I don't know, that may be where we're stretching the metaphor too much. Um, okay, this seems to be the last one even in the thing. Oh, it's nine o'clock. Anyway, okay, Ernie, you mentioned a sagey, the seed exists simultaneously with the tree. Yeah, but seeds can't have another tree. Why not? So one seed can't, oh, one seed can have many different trees over time. Ernie, I think that's fine if you, in, in the sense that, um, and again, if we're, we're talking in metaphor, if we're talking about literally a, a seed for a kumquat plant, okay, or an, or, or an orange tree, right? Um, the, the seed plants a tree and the tree fruits, and then a bunch of seeds come from there and then a bunch of new trees come. So you can say there are lots of seeds or, that come from that seed. There are lots of trees that come from that seed. You could say that. Um, uh, I think, um, okay. Oh, thank you very much. Have a blessed day. Oh, don't mind if I do. It's nine o'clock for me, which means it's, you know, whatever time it is where you are. And, uh, it's nice to get to hang out with you. And, um, I hope that I've been of some use to somebody somewhere. Have a lovely evening. Good night. I'm going to press the do this thing. I'm going to stop recording, stop live stream. I remembered.